Here we are. So, oh man, <laughs> oh man. I had no idea, <laughs> I had no idea. Oh man, you know, we, we worked so hard on it, you know? I know. <laughs> oh God, it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. Look at the cab, man, look at that. I know. Oh man, oh man, the colors, you know? Yeah. The colors are yeah. great. I never dreamed it would look this cool. In the two years we worked on it, to see it in the flesh is, is spectacular. It was incredible. You look at it in black and white and a little thing, this is what the Tower of Poisons will look like, it's gonna be like this big. And then, then you see it with, 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 oh man. I was asked by the Smithsonian to help him come up with some topics for a touring exhibit to mark the 150th anniversary of the AVMA. What it does is take the kid through an interactive exhibit where they're the doctor and they can see and make the call on where they should go next and what test should be run. We consulted with a lot of different veterinarians when we were creating this exhibition. We also tapped into our own zoo veterinarians. I am so thrilled to see this thing come to fruition because I walked in and I thought, this is exactly how I pictured it in my head. I saw spreadsheets and conceptual drawings and then I walked in and just went, wow, this is great. One of the missions of the Smithsonian is to get out across the country. So part of that goal is not just to have those exhibits available in Washington when you come to our institutions, but to be able to reach you in your hometown. What this exhibit does, it shows so many great things about relationships with animals. Everything from the farm and large animals to, to zoo animals to companion animals that we love, dogs and cats, to exotic uh, non-traditional pets that are in, in, in American homes. Animals aren't impulse buyers. This isn't something you just buy and then the kids are really psyched for a few weeks and then it languishes, languishes on a shelf and, and just kind of suffers. So I, I think that you have to find one, you know, are, are you home a lot? Are you allergic to things? If you take your time and do your homework, there's, there's somebody out there for you. Show our results here, okay? So I, sh I should get us uh, one of these guys, okay? What do you think will make a cow help comfortable? Large animal medicine is always going to be so important when you realize every day how much ex uh, ex uh, contact you really do have with, with uh, farm and farm-produced products. And, and so uh, God bless the farmers. They take care of us in so many ways that you wouldn't even think of and you take for granted every day. Seeing it all these different things, I thought that wouldn't be like a very big job until I came here and I understood all the big things that they do. I, I thought they only did like small animals, maybe like maybe dogs, cats, that's really all. But, but they do cows, cows, horses, chickens, cheetahs, all these different animals that I just amazing. That could be really cool. Yeah. Dogs and cats experience the world by tasting it. What we show are different household items that uh, can cause problems if they ingest them. This is a, a parrot. He's bored and he's unscrewing the screws in his own cage. My favorite case, an English setter that uh, Christmas morning had eaten a glass Christmas ornament. The lesson here is to provide, I think, safe, safe environments for, for them that, that they do uh, experience the world by tasting it. There's 10 million other forms of life on this planet. You know, and we've been given uh, our intellect, you know, and, and we've been given this wonderful biodiversity. And hopefully the challenge of the next generation is to continue to keep our quality of life up without completely destroying the planet. And, and this is a way to give something back and to, to uh, have people respect life.